Welcome to June gem number five. This is all going to be about uh, the in-text workflow variables, uh, why you use them, where to find them, which types to use, uh, and when you can use them throughout your workflow. So we're going to be in a SharePoint list here. I'm going to bring up the workflow designer. And the one thing to note about what a variable is, it's basically a container that you're going to store some data into. Now you'll find up here your variables right under workflow settings so you can click on it there alternatively you can actually get to the variables when you're inside any of the actions but let's click on this and you'll see this little pop-up come up and you can you know close this create new ones delete them modify them etc so i'm going to click on new and this is where you see all the different workflow variable types so a single line of text pretty much uh, self-explanatory multiple lines of text the same choice gives you the ability to actually have a number of different values that you can then uh, select from which is kind of interesting this is actually a good one if you're going to store some data from a choice field into a control this might be one that you could use a number field so if you're doing any sort of calculation querying for the number of items etc you can use a number variable date time so again, self-explanatory. Yes, no, for those who are in the development feed, uh, field, is basically a Boolean, so true or false type of uh, variable. Personal group is a good one to be able to, uh, say, query, uh, query SharePoint or query Active Directory and get some user information. Person or group variable is a good one to store that into. An integer is just like a number variable, except numbers can have decimal points, whereas an integer is a, a whole number. List item ID, that's one where potentially you're querying a particular SharePoint list and you want to get the ID of a particular item, uh, you can use this list item ID. I've actually used a number variable for that as well, so you can kind of use them interchangeably. Action ID is kind of like an older variable type where uh, there are certain controls, specifically, if I remember correctly, the request approval action, where you can actually store the action ID uh, for when the task is created. It's almost like the task ID, but not quite the same thing. It's more of like an internal uh, Nintex ID for a particular task. And one of the ones that you'll find you'll use quite regularly is a collection variable. And a collection, think of it as a list or an array of data. So you could have like a uh, maybe a, an array of names, an array of uh, suburbs, an array of countries, an array of uh, list item IDs. You know, this is what you could use that collection for. Now, you can see we can actually set some default values for some of these controls. You can also have this little checkbox, which is show on start form. And what that means is for those workflows that you manually start, you can actually have these variables appear on that form, on that workflow. And we'll try to build one out and see what that looks like in a moment. So a couple of ways you can, you know, you can use different types of variables throughout your workflow. Now, here's the interesting thing. Let's cancel out of this. In some cases, people have thought that, oh, I'm building out a workflow. I need to figure out all the variables that I need at the beginning, build those uh, variables out, and then I can start building out my workflow. That's not the case. You can actually add more and more variables as you go through your design process. So for example, let's say I decide I'm going to query, query a list, and I'm going to pull out some values. Oops, that didn't work. Let me drag that over again and I'm just going to do documents and what I want to do is just get back the ID I'm not doing any filtering and I say yep I want to query the documents library and just give me all the IDs now notice I have no where to store that data right I need a variable so here's the variable button that you see in the actions uh, configuration window so I can click on that looks exactly the same as the one we just saw and I'm going to create a collection now this is the thing that I want you to uh, to understand. The way you name your variables is completely up to you. Some people have a particular standard. Some people are just completely random. I have something that I follow that makes it easier for me, which is I usually have a few characters at the very beginning of the name of the variable that lets me know what type of variable we're dealing with. So for example, I would say collection of document IDs. Okay, done. There's my collection. And that's all I want to do. Close. Now, when I go to the drop down, there's my variable. And that's it. It's going to query the documents library, give me all the IDs, and 
store them in a collection variable. Now, you can do some, some special things with that. One thing you can do, for example, is iterate through each of the IDs in that collection. So I'm going to use a for each, which means let's go through every item in this particular collection. I open up the for each. What's my target collection? There's my variable. Where do I want to store the results? Well, I don't have anything, so let's add a new variable. So notice I'm adding this as I go. Let's call it a list item ID. So I'll just say list item, I, list item ID. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, close, and there it is. Right? I'm not going to go to the configuration of the rest of this, but you can see go through each of these uh, document IDs and store them in this list item ID. And now for each of those, I might want to do something. You know, just for sort of debugging purposes, I'm going to do just log that to the workflow history. Right, where's my workflow variables? You see I have two of them. And I'll just insert that there and I'll maybe put in document ID. And that's it. So there's my very simple workflow. Okay, so you can see there I'm using a list item ID variable and a collection variable. What I'm going to do now is add a couple of other variables. Maybe I say num, I don't know, let's say stop uh, at 50 or something like that, right? And I'm going to actually, oh sorry, I'm going to call it stop at. And I'm going to say show on start form and yes, it's required. Okay, bang, done close. I'm going to go into the for each action. And here, I'm going to say, yeah, stop processing when something equals a particular value. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Notice I've got, well, that's not what I want. I want an index. So I'm going to create myself a number variable. I'm going to call it num index. And as this workflow is going to iterate through, through each of those values, it's going to store the index. Now, here we go. Stop processing when a particular va uh, value is true. Notice I've got nothing in here I can do anything with. So in this case, I'm going to create a yes, no variable. And I'll just call it boolean stop. Now it's set to no. That's my default. Okay. Which basically means continue processing you know, while we're uh, ready to go. Okay. Done. Now, inside here, what I want to do is compare that index to that number stop at value, which is something I'm just going to give later on. So let's do a very simple run if. And the run if is just going to do a simple condition. Oops. Let's do that. Okay. Now, what we're doing is actually comparing values. We're going to say if num stop at is equal to my index. Okay, done. Now, if it is, I want to do something special. I'm going to set a variable. Ah, come on, mouse is being, being weird on me. There we go. Okay. And all I'm doing is setting that Boolean stop to yes. This will tell the loop to stop. All right, done. That's all I'm going to do. Publish this workflow. And I'm just going to say, this is called my variable test workflow. And publish. Now, while this is publishing, I'm actually going to jump back into my list. I'm going to create myself a little test item. You can see a little bit of index forms there. There's my test item. I'm also actually going to jump into documents and see if I have anything. Now I have five documents in this documents library. And what I'm going to go do is actually kick off an item on that, or kick off a workflow on that particular item. So let's do that. There's my test item. I'm going to start this workflow. Now I want you to pay attention. As soon as I click on start a new workflow, there we go. We've got the workflow design. We can expand this out to see what this looks like. So that's just like our workflow that we built. All right, it looks just like that. The difference is, notice there's this num stop at. This is the variable we created that we set to be a start form variable. So we have five items. I'm going to say 
I want you to stop processing when we hit two, when we've done two items. So let's click on start. Off it goes, this is gonna kick off this workflow and hopefully we get to process, we get to query that document library, find five items and hopefully only process two of them. So let's have a look at that. You can see the workflow has started and completed and we should have, well, we've got three messages there and that's because the way we did it is we're comparing the index to a particular number and the first item in the collection is always at the zero index. So we actually did zero, one, two, which is why we're displaying three items. All right, we can actually fix that by moving that and ch or changing this particular run if to a set of condition. And let's move, oops, you know what? I'm going to go into here, operations, oops, set of condition. And I'm going to drag Wow, I'm going to drag this action into here. And here I'm going to compare, do the same comparison I had in my run if, which is if numstop is equal to, numstop at is equal to index. Oops. This mouse is being strange. There we go. Okay, so what this is doing is something a little bit different. Now we say if the index is equal to two or equal to some value that we type into the start form, then we're going to set the variable, the Boolean variable to stop or to yes, and it's gonna stop it. Otherwise it will log it. So let's try this again really quickly. Let's go back to the list. As soon as this publishes, we'll rerun this workflow and this time we should only get two items. Let's try this again. And off it goes, and hopefully this time, it will only log two items uh, for that. And let's check that out. Oh, didn't log anything. Great. Hmm, interesting. Let's have a look. Saying so if numst, oh, you know why? Because I started the workflow and I didn't fill anything into that start form. So let's try that again. Here we go, two. I left it at zero, which meant it didn't even bother going through that for each. Now let's have a look. There's our two items. Now it makes sense. See, really easy for, uh, for even people who've been building workflows for a long time to make a very simple uh, logic mistake. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea of where you can uh, build your variables, how you can use them, and just a number of ways you can use collections, because collections are gonna be a big one. There's a lot of blog posts out there around how to use collection variables, so really important to get your head around that. Thanks for your time, and look forward to the next June Gem.